This is going to be my reaction video to the Ravens' 28-27 to loss down in Jacksonville. I think it's a possibly season-changing or season-defining loss. You thought that you were past these types of situations in terms of blowing them, and you can blame who you want. Um, as, a, as a person who's been in charge of people before, as a coach, uh, you always say, like, you can't pass the buck when you're the head coach. You can't. So, so the, the blame or the buck does stop with you in terms of overall blame. But that doesn't mean there's not blame to spread around to everyone. And if and when you have a head coach or people who are willing to take the blame initially, you have to stand up and do it. You have to t stand up and take your part of it. And there's plenty to go around for, for real. We have to touch on it. And it sucks because the Ravens are our favorite players. But honestly, our players blew this game today. That's my opinion. You can have your own perspective. That's fine. Uh, if you were to ask me what ratio of blame to apply to players and coaches, I would say 85 to 15 or 90-10 in terms of our players. So I'm going to have an opening monologue here that I'll use to talk about it, talk about the loss and try to encapsulate it, and then I'll go into my gameplay and kind of show you guys um, some of the stats. So number one, the loss of Kyle Hamilton is huge. We, we knew that it would be a loss coming into today, but I don't think we really knew until such time that the Jags just recognized that they could not run the football consistently. So they just decided to go 11 personnel and throw the ball. When they went 11 personnel, they got Humphrey in the slot. And so they were able to isolate and attack Stevens and Peters. And those guys just aren't holding up on the outside. They're just not consistently. There's times where Peters makes plays. Stevens doesn't make plays. I, I, I like Brandon Stevens. He's a competitor. I like how how tough he, how he does normally compete till the end of the, the play. Uh, today, there, I thought there was a couple of times he went when he did not, and I didn't see really good things out of Marcus Peters today, to be honest with you. That, the loss of Kyle Hamilton was huge. He really sets our defense up for success when he's in the slot and Humphrey is our right corner and Peters is our left corner. We look a whole lot better in those situations, and I thought that uh, even, you know, you want to know how important someone is remove them from the situation and see what things look like when they're removed. So let's do that with Humphrey. When Humphrey went out, I thought we just gave up big pass plays easily. And then he came back on the next possession. Same thing applies to Kyle Hamilton. You know, we're missing Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams thought that there was a, a big, you know, gap in our defense today. Number two uh, drops and execution. I mean, if you look, if you're looking for someone to blame the coaches for today, and I'm specific, specifically talking about our offensive coaches, you've come to the wrong place. You can stop listening now if you want to. That's fine. Or maybe you're blaming the wrong coach. Because the one thing I will say is like, and I confronted a couple of people in our Discord about this. They're like blaming Greg Roman for players dropping the ball. He ain't the wide receiver coach. It's funny to me. A lot of people that complain about Greg Roman all the time, they don't talk about the wide receiver coach or the tight end coach or the quarterback coach. They don't blame those guys at all. Like, and half of the people making those complaints don't even know how, how drill situations work out in practice anyway. But I, dig I digress. Look, it's unfortunate that we have to sit here and talk about player execution, uh, and I'm going to, because Lamar made two plays in a row in the fourth quarter that I think n it might not be another quarterback in the history of football that can make the two plays that he did. So, so what I'm talking about is Lamar's pass to Deshaun Jackson, which was an amazing moment for like 66 yards. You know, great play. I'm not even too sure that Deshaun Jackson got touched for real, but an amazing throw by Lamar. And a great concept, I thought. S somewhat similar to the throw to Watkins against the Lions on that 4th and 18 last year. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that. So amazing play. 65 yards, 62 yards, something like that. Then the very next play, he keeps it on an option keeper to the right. And not only does he get 9 yards, but he's got the physicality and the strength and, and ball awareness to protect the football and gain nine yards and stay in bounds. I, the, com, not comparison, the dichotomy of those two plays, the, the distinct skill sets that you need to execute both of them. Number, number one, the throw to Jackson, being able to navigate the pockets. I think he had to slide a little bit to his right to avoid, it wasn't immediate, it wasn't complete pressure, but a little bit of pressure, and then set his feet and throw the football. There was a little wiggle in the throw, otherwise he might have hit Deshaun Jackson, you know, in stride for a touchdown. And I'm still not too damn sure that Deshaun Jackson wasn't untouched. And then the next play, the ability to read the option, keep it, speed to run around the edge, physicality and strength, and awareness to stay in bounds. I just don't know another quarterback in the history of the NFL that can make those two plays 
on back-to-back plays. I, I guess, you know, some people are probably going to be able to think of one, and, and that's fine. So from that standpoint, it's so unfortunate that we had such a lack of execution across the board with so many players and drops. I mean, you have to mention it. Andrews dropped a touchdown. He's he's open. If the ball's thrown right in his hands, he's got to catch that ball. I think we did score a touchdown two plays later, so that didn't hurt us in terms of points produced. Personally, I believe we left out between eight and 11 points on the board today from player execution. I'm not, I apply zero blame to the coaches for those points being left on the field. Try to justify it all you want, but go ahead. Let me see how y'all do this. Uh, Andrews dropped a touchdown. Oliver dropped a touchdown that, I mean, if that ball is high, I, there's no other way, there's no other angle for Lamar to get that ball in there. I just, uh, the announcer, James Lofton, who I think does a great job. And let me get some offense stats up here. James Lofton does a great job. Like, I appreciate listening to him. He's all class. He doesn't denigrate people at all. I really like listening to him. You know, he said that that throw was high to Oliver. I, my only thing is, if it's high, how how could Lamar get it to Oliver with a lower trajectory? You know what I'm saying? I just don't know how that happens. We had to settle for a field goal on that drive. To me, that's four more points that we could have, you know, got out there. You may not blame Oliver. No problem. You know, that's fine. But it would be interesting if you don't blame Oliver, but then you blame our coaches for other things. Uh, but in any case, Robinson dropped a touchdown on a third down, I think, on the first possession. You know, that, you know, yeah, he's diving. James Lofton, who is a Hall of Fame receiver, identified that maybe he didn't have to dive. I don't know. I only had, you know, the two looks that we saw at it. But clearly it's a ball that Robinson can catch. Um, I think he's capable of catching that ball. Earlier on that same possession, I think first possession, Lamar overthrew Robinson wide open for what could have been a touchdown, probably would have been a touchdown. So three drops in the end zone. I don't know how you apply that blame to coaches. That's just play. We just left points out on the field. Our players did, played horrible. That We really did. I think you play this game 10 times and 27 points is probably the lowest amount of points we score given the gameplay today. Um, Ricard, Duvernay, and Drake had drops in the flats, each of them. Now, the one to Ricard might have been, I don't know, maybe it was a foot or two more toward the sideline than it should have been, but I don't. I really think it's a ball that Ricard could have caught. Uh, Duv, shocking that he dropped that ball out in the flats. That was shocking. Drake had a drop in the flats in his hands, and then Duv on special teams. Um I don't know what to say about his kick return in the early fourth quarter. Maybe it was third quarter. I, 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 yeah, it was, thir- it was fourth quarter. It was before Lamar's throw. We ended up on the six. I have no idea what he's doing. Running the ball back to the middle of the field. Um, that was shocking. I think he lost five yards on the kick return. Maybe it wasn't five. Maybe it was only three. But really, really horrible play by him. Andrews had another one on what might have been Lamar's second best throw on the day, up the left sideline to Andrews on a wheel against Arden Key, who was running underneath. And, you know, clearly he did grab Andrews' arm, but I think Andrews could catch that ball. That's player execution, guys. Like, what what are we doing when we can't just watch a guy drop a football and say that's his fault for dropping the ball or we overthrow it? That's our fault for overthrowing the football. Or – I'll give you another one. This one's very difficult for me to say. Gus Edwards, what's the score? I mean, we deserve this loss, like for real. If you're not a Ravens fan, you're probably not listening, but we deserve this loss, for real. We did not not play well. But how how do the Jags get to 28 points if Gus Edwards doesn't fumble the football? Like, we're up 19-10. They go down and score. Okay, fine. We gave up a touchdown. We fumble the ball with 540 left. And, on, and they get the ball on our 16. Like, period. How do they win if we don't turn the ball over there? If we end up having to punt, and, and then maybe they drive down the field and get a field goal, and then and then we go down like we did, you know, and, and go ahead, go back ahead, how do, they, how do they win? They run out of time, guys. That's my point. Overall, we had three fumbles today. Lamar on the fourth down, which I thought was a, a ridiculous situation by the referees respotting the ball. I've literally never seen that. I've seen team. I've seen refs measure. I've seen that. But what happened, I suspect, is a sideline judge came in from one side and overruled the spot on from the other sideline judge. You know, there's two sideline judges to spot the ball, and then the ref or the white hat spots it off of them. 
off of their judgment from the side because they have the best view. That's the only thing I suspect, but we didn't see that because it went to timeout. Maybe, maybe you know, somebody here who's listening was at the game or has heard a better explanation for it. That up to that point, up to that point when we get the first down at midfield, up six nothing, like we are absolutely dominating the game. And then that had the that was the weirdest momentum change. You know, we go for it and we don't get it. I thought it was a really bad play call by us, the QB sneak. It was obvious we were going behind Ricard. At that point, like, just put Ricard right behind Lamar, and when we quarterback sneak, just have Ricard push. That's what everybody else is doing. It's a BS play, but that's what everybody's doing. So, you know, we had three fumbles. We're fortunate we didn't lose Andrew's fumble on the first possession. Lamar's fumble, okay, we weren't going to get it anyway. We didn't get the first down anyway, so I don't really have a problem with him reaching out trying to get the first down. And then Edwards fumbles the ball to them. It was, a ho- it was horrible. It was a great play by 42, don't get me wrong. How do the Jags win? And then from that, how do you blame our coaches for that situation? I mean, Gus Edwards is a great player. He's our best running back. He fumbled the ball. And that's tough for me to say because I really like him. I wish, I think Gus Edwards is a 1,200-yard back in this league if he's healthy and he can play the whole year and get enough carries. But, he, you know, he generally doesn't get those carries because we split reps. So, finally, uh, before I get into a little bit of the gameplay, our defense was overconfident, if you ask me. And and the DBs don't compete till the end of the play. Now, I'm not including Marlon Humphrey in that at all. Marlon Humphrey is is a different thing. He's the best player on our team. Like, I... As, good, as great as Lamar is, you know, he's one of 32 in terms of quarterbacks. Uh, there's such a, a, a higher number of starting DBs in the NFL. I, th- I think Marlon Humphrey's our best overall player right now. But having said that, Marcus Peters just doesn't compete till the end of the play sometimes. That touchdown to Zay Jones, I thought the announcers – first of all, I don't know how it's a touchdown. I, I don't know how that's a touchdown. Uh, all I've ever been told is you got to get two feet in bounds. He has one foot in bounds. A part of his calf comes down as the rest of his body comes down out of bounds. I'm not sure how that's a touchdown. You guys can, you know, explain it to me. I'm sure other people know the NFL rules more than uh, real football rules, which is generally what I refer to as college, uh, youth, and high school. So I don't think Peters competes because the announcers did a great job. If he just gets hands on and pushes the guy out of bounds, you know, then then it's probably ruled incomplete or pushes him further out of bounds. Maybe another inch or two inches of his calf ends up out of bounds. He's probably ruled incomplete. Stevens on the the game winning uh, two point conversion. I don't, I don't know how a guy on a four yard route, Zay Jones. First of all, how do we not know that that's where they're going? I mean, like look at who we've got on the field. They're not attacking Marlon Humphrey ever. I'm just not sure why we don't sometimes switch it. You know, now granted they did send Zay Jones in motion. Because they, you know, they recognized where Marlon was. That's really, to me, all that was. They recognized where Marlon was, ran him across to get him lined up against Stevens. I'm not sure how we don't have some type of special coverage to help. I, I like Brandon Stevens. I-, I-, I appreciate his story. You know, that he's a he's a guy who um, has fought to play corner. Um, he's just not capable of being a starter on a good team. He's just not. He's a good player who can come in when we're missing people, and he's going to get targeted a lot. I didn't think he competed on that play. How does Zay Jones get open? It's a four-yard route, and I think he's open by a yard and a half, a yard and a half of separation. So having gone through all that monologue, and you know, I'm, I'm quite sure that a lot of people disagree with me in terms of applying blame to players more so than coaches. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you justify uh, blaming other people for – like let's put it this way. Remember the bomb that I talked about Lamar hitting Deshaun Jackson on? That was an amazing play by Lamar. What if Deshaun Jackson dropped it? Who are you going to blame? You going to blame Greg Roman? You going to blame our wide receiver coach? You going to blame our head coach? No, you're going to blame Deshaun Jackson. Like, what is this thing where we, as Ravens fans, or, or fans of any team probably, like, we don't want to blame our players for the times when they mess up? Only certain players, though. Like, you just co- probably co-signed everything I said about Brandon Stevens. See, I set some of you up. You just probably co-signed everything I just said about Brandon Stevens. But the stuff I said six or eight minutes earlier about our players dropping the ball or the lack of execution, like the fumble by Gus Edwards, or I'll give you another one. I'll, t- I'll give you a guy who doesn't have a catch. He- his name ain't on that screen today, I don't think. James Porchet had an amazing catch for 23 yards in the fourth quarter that I thought would have really been a huge game, a huge uh, change in momentum. I think it was before Gus's fumble, but I could be wrong. 
and then we have a we have a penalty that brings it back as a hold on. I think Makari. I could be wrong. So like, how is that? You know, how is that on a, on a coach? I don't I don't understand. You know, this rush to judge our coaches. It seems like a lot of people got things got their perspective predetermined, and they're not just judging what happens on the field. So let's talk about what happened on the field a little bit in a progression. We got a three nothing lead on the first possession. We were fortunate. I talked about the Andrews fumble. Um, and then <laughs> the Jags happened to have a player out of bounds, Chad Muma, who's a rookie inside linebacker. Interesting to me that he was on the field so much because, like, Devin Lloyd can play. Chad Muma and him are both rookies. And, like, I would never take Foye Aluokan off the field, would you? I mean, guy had, like, 29 tackles today. Um, a few plays later in the fr- after that Andrews fumble, Robinson's wide open on a climb concept. Great concept. Andrews is running an in-breaking route, and then – Robinson from the other side runs the climb concept wide open. Very similar to what uh, Jackson hit him on later in the game, Deshaun Jackson. We're open. The ball's just a little too far out in front. Easily could have been a touchdown. I'm not sure if, you know, it was miscommunication or maybe Robinson got hung up running across the field. Not sure. Ravens get a delay of the delay of game from the 10 and then almost get another one on the very next play. It seemed like that second one. I don't know whose fault this shit is. Like, I have no idea. But what I am going to say is the second one, after the delay of game, the very next one, it seemed like that play clock was done in 15 seconds. So I wonder sometimes if we're not like switching personnel and things are happening too late. It definitely seemed like in the second half we were getting a playoff earlier. You guys can let me know, um, you know, what you thought. We got a stop on the, on the uh, first possession. Uh, there was a sack by Broderick Washington. And then... Um, you know, Zay Jones, it was established early that they were gonna they were gonna attack with him because he's he's a big, strong, talented guy. And then we stopped uh, Lawrence on a quarterback sneak on a fourth and one. Let me switch this graphic. Sorry. We stop Z- we stop um Trevor Lawrence on a quarterback sneak, get the ball, go down, take a six nothing lead, and we missed an opportunity to make it ten nothing, I thought. Um it was a throw by Lamar in, that hit Robbins, Robinson in the back of the end zone. He's diving, like I mentioned. I think he could have made the catch, for real. We had two big runs on the drive. We had a 15-yard downhill run by Edwards and then a seven-yard run by Lamar on an option keep. Jags go three and out on their second possession. We're just dominating them, man. You know, Brent Urban, Roquan Smith make a tackle on a stretch play. Then there's a... Uh, a quick pass out into the flats to the to their left or right, and Brandon Stevens is there to jump the tight end for a short gain. Uh, just beautiful football to start. Beautiful football to start. And then that ridiculous situation near the end of the first quarter or maybe the beginning of the second where our first down was, de- was, was re-spotted. I've never seen anything like that in person on TV or watching t- college. I have seen something like that. I, I, I need to re-speak that. I have seen something like that somewhat similar in high school. I've seen two great teams, two 11-0 teams in the playoffs. I've seen a game um, pretty much be decided. A 7-6 score. The team who has uh, seven, six, six points, excuse me, is driving on a fourth and one, and they go for it, and the ball is spotted like two inches short. I've seen a white hat walk up. You know, the football's laying flat on the ground. And walk up, take the football, and roll it forward. Now, I don't know how physic, you know, how he could bend the laws of physics and do this, but he rolled the ball forward. So the tip of the football, the literal tip of the football, I guess, somehow moved forward, or he was able to make it look like it went forward. He called it a first down. Of course, two plays later, the team that was down 7 6 scores, and they end up winning the football game. Unbelievable. It was like four minutes left in the game. Ridiculous. To me, this was as ridiculous. Then the play call. I think the play call sucked. The quarterback sneak, me personally, up 6 nothing. You know, we're dominating their offense. I'm punting from midfield after that. Because the Jags just ripped off some huge plays. They had the play-action boot to Zay Jones for like 13. Then they had this real cool fold-blocking scheme on a run by Hasty off left tackle. They down-block our D-end, and the left tackle pulls out and kicks. Kind of like an old-school belly play, like a pin. Some people call it pin-pull, but, I mean, it's just it's just belly. Like, there's nothing new under the sun. You know, like pin-pull is just belly blocking on a three and a five so and then they caught you know this is disappointing this is where you start to see some cracks in some of our uh our personnel marcus peters is cheating on an empty formation hasty the running back is lined up wide to the right and pre-snap you can even see peters walk inside like he doesn't even line up over the guy to me it looks like two read 
like maybe one of the slot receivers ran out, and Peters jumped it, and the number one receiver, which in this case was Hasty, the running back, up the right sideline easy for a touchdown, 7-6. I thought the 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 refs the determination by the refs to respot it was terrible. But from operating from that, I thought our sneak call, our, deci- our decision to go for it and our sneak call was worse. And then Peter's coverage here was worse. And that's where I say, but like, there's enough blame to go around. Like, you don't have to just pick the players or just pick the coaches. There's enough blame to go around on everybody. And that situation there, those things that happened, you know, I feel like kind of illustrates that. Deshaun Jackson, you know, had an opportunity to make a catch on our third drive. We ended up going up nine to seven. Um, and and the safety makes a great break on it. Don't get me wrong. I feel like Deshaun Jackson needs to come back to the ball a little bit more, but I only saw the view from behind the defense on it, so I can't really make a judgment on that. It was a deep curl. Uh, we also had a, a fade corner to Andrews that we overthrew, and then there was Ricard on the screen. I understand we've got to do those things sometimes. I feel like that's more like a third, fourth quarter play, you know, the screen to Ricard if we're if teams are – if you if you if you have been on the field a lot as Ricard and you haven't had the ball thrown to you at all, I feel like those screens are more effective after like forty plays or thirty plays of him being on the field as opposed to at this point, you know, mid late second quarter he'd been on the field for you know the first twenty twenty five plays. Hopefully that makes sense. Jags two minute offense looked good late in the second quarter. They got the ball with four fifty one left. They only got a field goal I think to take a ten seven lead ten nine lead excuse me, but they they generated some big plays. They generated some big plays. The blown coverage by us on the backside of trips. We did. We talked about it in the Discord. I forget who it was mentioned it. Um, the, the Jags threw to the backside of trips often. You know, on film, some of the preview stuff that I put out there on Saturday. Just an inconsistent first half ends up with us being down ten nine in a game that, to me, felt like we could have been up fourteen seven or or seventeen seven something like that. And that's the problem with this Ravens team is that even when we're out playing people, the margin isn't big enough because we're leaving points on the board. In some, in some games, it has been coach's fault, the Dolphins game, don't get me wrong. In this game, I think it was all players' fault in terms of the, well, in the refs, you know, taking the ball away from us uh, at midfield. So um, third quarter, unfortunately, you know, the Ravens, in, in my opinion, just didn't come out with the right mindset offensively. I think, I think Gus... We could have got more going on the stretch stuff. I know that the bu- the Bucks. I know that the Jaguars did shut it down twice, and then we had to fumble on the stretch. I really would like to see us run that more because it gives him the option to um, to cut it up or bounce it outside. And we had a, we had a real missed opportunity. I thought um, we had a real missed opportunity. I thought on our sixth possession. I think it was our sixth possession. Duve, Duve drops the ball out in the right flats. I was shocked. I don't know about you. I, have you seen Duve drop a ball? Like, I've seen him on contested catches make the catch clean. And then this was a wide open pass play out in the flats. It looked like it was schemed to get him the ball. The ensuing third down, it looked like he, Lamar went to Duve again in the middle of the field on a deep route. And it looked like maybe Duve lost the ball in the sun or something and, and kind of stopped running. I'm not trying to be too, too critical of Duve because I, I, he's one of my favorite players, guys. But those two plays in a row, I think they happened consecutively, for real. A drop out in the right flats. And then the, on a wide open, he's wide open, at least five to seven yards, somewhere around in there. Maybe maybe a little less. You know, Maybe it's only like six yards available to him. And then the very next play, he stopped running. I'll have to see it again. You know, I could be wrong. All right, we're down 12-10, I believe. Um, excuse me, we go up 12-10, and then we get the ball on our seventh possession, and I feel like we start shredding them, and we're getting ready to take control, and we did. Lamar scrambles for 12 after an incomplete pass to Edwards where there was pressure, and then Duve on the sweep. Oh, this is after we, I think we have forced a fumble. We got the ball on like their 25. Duve on a sweep to the left for seven. Option give to Edwards for zero. And then the quarterback power play, amazing six-yard touchdown run by Lamar. But again, they call it back. And then there's this weird situation where Moses ends up with no helmet on in a scuffle, and it's no penalties. I don't know. Maybe there should have been a penalty on us. Maybe there should have been a penalty on them. I don't know. 
you know? In any case, Lamar got the first down on that run. After they reviewed it, they called it, you know, as something that was not a touchdown. And then first and goal, a great play call, incomplete to Andrews, wide open, back of the end zone. Don't get me wrong, there's a player there competing. I think it was the safety, the same safety that broke on Deshaun Jackson and broke that ball up on, like, the deep curl that I talked about. He's there, but he's, to me, he's a yard, yard and a half away. That ball should be caught. You guys tell me what you think. I only saw the replay once. That's a drop. Now, we scored on the next play. So when I say we left points on the field, I'm not counting that because we did get a touchdown. You know, the second effort by Gus, amazing effort to get in. That's what we have Gus Edwards for, right? To finish things off in those short yardage situations. It's 19-10, and you feel like we're in control at this point. It's difficult for me to say this. A lot of us identified before the trade deadline that we were one corner short. And when I say one corner short, I mean even when Hamilton and Humphrey are there, we might still be one corner short. When people go 11 personnel, if we want to play man, we're not going to put Kyle Hamilton on a little slot like Christian Kirk. He's not going to stop him. That's not a good matchup for us. You know what I mean? So therefore, when Kyle Hamilton's out and Humphrey is in as the slot corner, like, Guys, this, this, is, this is difficult to say. In terms of stopping people consistently in the pass, we may be two corners short. I'm talking about with no Hamilton, all right? When Hamilton's in the slot and Marlon's out there at right corner, then I think we're, we're maybe one corner short of being where we want to be. You know, it really, it really showed itself on the completion to Zay Jones over Peters in what looks like cover two. So people are going to focus on Peters. No problem, okay? Maybe he doesn't like playing zone. I get that. He played a lot of man. He's a little bit of a gambler, and there's and he makes plays. I mean, he had a fumble recovery today. Like, I'm, I'm going to roll with Marcus Peters. I like him. When I say we're two corners short, I mean two corners short of being absolute shutdown, all right? I still think we can win with Marcus Peters out there. I do. But we can't have Peters and Stone on the same side in cover two. And that's what happened here. They threw it over the top of Peters on this fourth and eight. And it's not just that Peters is unable to recover. Stone is not an incredibly agile safety, guys. He's playing very well for us. Don't get me wrong. But when we have him on the field and Brandon Stevens and Humphrey in the slot, I mean, we are, we are deficient in terms of agile athletes who have a lot of fast twitch reactions on pass concepts. Now, if it's a run play, Geno Stone put his foot in the ground, he'll come downhill now, and he's going to smack the crap out of somebody. I'm talking about cover two, half field safety, which is what this looked like. I went back and looked again. On the fourth and eight, they throw it over Peters. That's a huge moment in the game for real because Humphrey's off the field and Christian Kirk is off the field. Remember, the play before that was Lawrence scrambled down the scrambled left on a third and eight Threw it down the left sideline, tried to find Kirk. Ball hit Stone in the gut, and he dropped it. And, and you can tell me if if I did not see that accurately. Because we saw that replay. To me, it looked like the ball zipped past Kirk and went right into um, Stone's hands, and he just dropped it. So there again, that's the third and eight. The very next play is the fourth and eight, and we can't, in our cover two, we can't keep them from completing the ball over top of the corner, outside the safety, towards the sideline. Give Trevor Lawrence credit and Zay Jones credit. Zay Jones played a great game. Don't get me wrong. My point is there are situations defensively where we're outgunned when we don't have Kyle Hamilton and we don't have um, Marcus Williams. And on this particular play, we didn't have Marlon Humphrey. I still think that we can win games. I still think this team, uh, this Jaguars team, is a team that we should beat nine times out of ten. And if you're a Jaguars fan and you've you know you've listened this long, which probably none have, you know don't take that disrespectfully. I co- I covered j- the Jags defense a lot in the first five or six weeks in video format. I really like the, the what they're building with the front group. I really like tr- Foyer Aluakin. You know I've done two videos on him. I'll be doing a third one this week. Man had 18 tackles I think. But this game, just look at the stats. 415 total yards to 332. 24 first downs for us to 18 for them. And I think seven of the of their first downs came on their last two drives. So it was a pretty big differential. Absent turnovers and drop passes. I feel like this is a 34 to 17 game, something like that. 
You guys let me know what you think of those thoughts. You know, if you're not comfortable with someone, you know, like myself being able to evaluate the game in isolation and say, hey, this is one where our players lost it, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I'm not going to blame Deshaun Jackson for dropping that 66-yard bomb from Lamar. I'm not going to blame a coach for if Deshaun Jackson dropped it. Excuse me. Now, he didn't drop it. He called it. He made the play, so he gets credit for that. But if he dropped it, it's his fault. And there's enough blame to go around in the whole damn thing. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're sitting here at 7-4. and four. Credit to the Jags, man. Their coach has big guts, right? Now, granted, he's he's playing with house money, too. You know, they're 3-7. and seven, It's at home. And so they go for the win, and they get it. I feel like it's a real poor job of us identifying what's possibly about to happen on that two-point conversion. They line up in trips to the right and a tight end to the left, and then they motion Zay Jones across, get him isolated on Stevens. I feel like there's got to be a way for our coaches, players, to adjust and recognize what's about to happen. Uh, the ball's on the two. There's nothing wrong if they throw a fade and Brandon Stevens interferes with him as long as we don't give up the catch. Uh, to me, if they run the ball there, that's a win for us. We've got a better chance to stop the, the run anyway. Um, closing this out, you know, I, I don't think that the season is over, but I think this is possibly a season-defining loss. If I remember correct, our schedule coming up is the Broncos at home and then on the road against the Steelers and the Browns. Division games on the road, you can't, you can't say, oh, that's a win. You can't do that. I mean, look at this. This is a road game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who was 3-7, and seven, and we couldn't just say, oh, that's a win. If we get execution like this from our players and some of the poor decisions I think we had, like I said, not recognizing how they were isolating Brandon Stevens on the motion, we still got a timeout left. Now, we had just called a timeout on that two-point conversion I'm talking about. Deciding to go for it on the fourth and one from midfield when we're up 6 nothing, I think it illustrates a little bit of overconfidence. Additionally, the fourth and eight where Peters and Stone – Gave up the cover two, uh, like a fade corner, excuse me, I should say corner, to Zay Jones. We had timeouts there with Humphrey off the field. Now, Humphrey came back on the next possession. My point is, I feel like there's little things that we could do as coaches to help improve our situation at times. And I think there's big things today that our players didn't do. Catch the football, hold on to the football. I mean, anytime you have three fumbles, you're putting yourself in, in, in danger of losing a football game that you shouldn't. And to me, that's what happened today. Ravens lost the football game that they shouldn't. Kind of can't believe we're having this conversation now in week 12. Thought that um, we were past this with the early season struggles. It appears that we're not. Let me know what you think of some of my thoughts from the game. Who you think I should cover in video form uh, from today's game. Obviously, Josh Oliver you know, played well, except for that one drop that I talked about. Lamar, I thought, was ripping it again today. One overthrow to to Robinson, and maybe a second one to Andrews on a corner to the right side. It looked like a little better coverage on that situation, like he had to throw it over top of a defender. But I thought generally he was ripping it again for the second week in a row. Would have liked to have seen our completion percentage be a little bit higher. I think he was 17 of 32, 17 of 32 today, maybe 16 of 32. And we only had 253 passing yards. This is the second week in a row where I feel like we could have thrown the ball a little better on a team that didn't that had a better front seven, front six, than they did on the back end. Appreciate you guys checking the video out. Let me know who you think you'd um, like for me to cover this week in video format and which player from the Jags you'd like to see me cover uh, to highlight their play. You know who it's going to be anyway. Appreciate you guys' time.